Two years ago I made a video about necromancy world building. One of the comments on it was from an indie game developer who told me that the next game he wants to make is a necromancy game. On Monday he informed me that his game is now in early access and he sent me a key to try it out. His game is called Gadonia and it's an open world RPG with very good necromancy and minion mechanics. When you're designing your character, you get to assign some attribute points. The attributes are Strength, Agility, Intelligence, and Charisma. For Magic and Necromancy, Intelligence and Charisma are important. Intelligence increases the size of your mana pool and the strength of your spells, and Charisma increases the amount of minions and companions that can follow you. If you max out your Charisma, you can have 4 followers. These attributes are permanent and won't change beyond this point. You can learn necromancy right away by learning dark magic and then choosing reanimate skeleton. Each skeleton will reserve a percentage of your mana pool for itself. In the starter dungeon you can already have a bunch of minions sawing you around, which is fantastic. It's an early access game and the occasional bug is to be expected, although I've not experienced many bugs in Gadonia at all, and certainly nothing game breaking. I'll talk more about the bugs later on, but the most inconvenient bug is the follower pathfinding. I got a taste of it in the beginner dungeon when the skeletons couldn't follow me up a ramp. One of them was stuck where he was, the other kept running underneath the rock instead of up the ramp. I later observed that minions have a hard time pathfinding wherever the terrain is a bit uneven or unusual. I got another taste of it in the mountains fighting orcs where the minions were often unable to make their way to the enemy. Everywhere else though the minions work totally fine, so it's not an issue you run into all that often. Upon leaving the dungeon, you are able to begin the process of joining a faction. There's a lot of factions, and for us the necromance faction is the one we want. They are necromancers, and joining them will make you an enemy of the warriors, mages, bandits, and the monastery. The monastery are the most opposed to necromancy because they are priests, paladins, and all those other types of holy boys. The barbarians and merchants are neutral towards necromancers. Even though I was initially at war with the bandits and killed a lot of them, the bandits hate the warriors and I killed even more warriors than I did bandits. Every killed warrior raised my reputation with the bandits and eventually they became friendly towards me. It may also be possible to get on the mages good side despite being a necromancer because killing the monastery folks pleases the mages. I'll probably never find out though because I killed too many mages. It's similar to an Elder Scrolls game in that it has a main quest, but you can also opt to just head out and explore the world without starting it, which is what I decided to do. The world is very big and there's lots of quests to do, things to discover and places to explore. There's lots of people to talk to and quests can be solved in more than one way and also with different outcomes. Your attributes often provide potential solutions in quests. You're able to rely on your strength to lift something heavy, your intelligence to fix something or your charisma to talk yourself out of trouble or convince someone else to do something they normally wouldn't. Your combat skills also play a role, as do your passive skills. Speaking of passive skills, there's a lot of them to engage in. You can harvest plants in the wilderness and use them to create potions with using the alchemy skill. You can mine ore to get metal and create stuff with it using the blacksmithing skill. There's also level working, tailor, cooking and quite a few other things to engage in. The undead minions on offer are the skeleton warrior and the skeleton mage. Both of them are useful and do well in combat. One of the coolest things about the game is the element system. The different magic schools all offer elements, which is like a buff you can apply to yourself for an effect. The cool thing though, is that these effects will transform the skeletons in some way. For example, in the nature school there is a bestial element, and the nature element. If you summon a skeleton warrior with the bestial element, he becomes a crawling beast-like skeleton, with a better offense but a worse defense, and he will also occasionally stun the enemy. I like these ones a lot. The nature element will transform your skeleton into a nature skeleton, which is surrounded by a swarm of biting insects that damages enemies nearby. The other element's effects are fire, which decreases health by 20% and makes the skeleton explode on death. Ice, 
which increases the skeleton's armor by 25 and gives it an ice aura. Lightning, which allows the skeleton to hit multiple enemies when he attacks. Wind, which summons a skeleton archer, which I find especially cool and useful. Light, the skeleton instantly dies after summoning and heals 5% of the player's health. I haven't tried that one. And dark, the summon skeleton costs 3% less mana. For the skeleton mages, the effects of elements is less dramatic. It just changes the type of magical damage dealt by the skeleton mages, which is useful but less interesting. It would be cool if they also displayed their elements in a visual way, like the warrior skeletons do. You could make it like dark mages being wreathed in shadow, or nature mages channeling swarms of insects. As it is now, you don't know what element a mage is until it attacks. You can have any mixture of skeleton types you want. Just pick the element you want, then summon the skeleton, then change the element and summon the next skeleton. Each skeleton will keep whatever element it is summoned with until it dies, so you can really assemble quite a diverse force. You can tell your minions to go somewhere by pressing V, which is useful for telling them to go and attack some distant enemy while you remain safely behind them. Pressing V twice will command them to follow you again. Another thing I really like is how your mana and health don't regenerate. You need to eat food or use potions to restore health and mana, which is really nice in my opinion. I find it too easy otherwise. I always use the Atronarch birth sign in Oblivion for this reason. Wilkin stones, mana potions, etc. suddenly become useful things that you must pay attention to and must have with you at all times when you're no longer constantly regenerating mana. Let's talk about the bugs. There aren't any game-breaking ones, which is good. The worst bug I've experienced is sometimes when citizens become hostile to you during a quest. The minions will not register them as a threat, and you'll have to handle it on your own without their help. Here you can see this guy has become hostile to me, and because I'm a weak minions necromancer, I gotta eat a strike that takes a third of my health away and tickle him with my axe, while running away and slowly healing myself until he dies. I did manage to kill this guy, but it took me 5 minutes or so. I've encountered other small things like spelling mistakes and floating objects, none of which are a big deal. Oftentimes the map will not align perfectly with where you actually are. You'll often find that you're on the road and the map will display you not on a road, or that you're on the coast but the map displays you as being in the water, that type of thing. The most problematic bug, if you can even call it a bug, is how the followers behave. The follower AI needs some work. This is the biggest problem the game has from a minion's perspective, and I know it's a hard one to fix. Sometimes they run through walls or other solid objects, which isn't a big deal, but it counts as a bug I suppose. Skeleton mages will stand and shoot at pillars and things, or shoot at the ceiling, and minions of all kinds will struggle to navigate complicated terrain, often running under it or falling off it. That's all I've got for bugs. There's a few things I don't like or that I think can be improved on. The first one of these is stealing from houses. Right now it's a bit like Witcher 3 in that you can walk into anyone's home and loot it and nobody notices. I'd like it if people reacted to this. Another minor issue is that some people you kill for quests come back. For example, I had to murder this old fisherman as part of a quest, and I did so. When I visited the area again later on, I'd noticed that he's respawned. Your actions would feel more impactful as a player if he'd remained dead. Knights and caves, dungeons, etc. are too bright. You have torches in this game, and it would be great if the knights and dungeons were much darker, so that these torches would become useful. Right now it has the Bethesda style night, where things are darker, but you can still see perfectly fine. Enemies tend to feel too easy. With the exception of some enemies that can leap or charge at you, or have some other special attacks, a lot of enemies are slow and can be jogged away from, or are sluggish in combat. In situations where my minions couldn't win or couldn't attack, I've been able to defeat a much stronger enemy with cheesy tactics, when really I should have been killed. Finally, the world events are always in the same spot. It'd feel a bit more dynamic and alive if the war between bandits and warriors wasn't always happening over and over again in the same location. It'd also be really cool if cities occasionally got attacked by bandits 
and if the headquarters of various factions also came under assault from time to time. Groups of units from the different factions could also patrol the roads, doing battle when they encounter each other. I've seen wandering merchants, so I hope this is possible. I think all of these things would do wonders to help breathe more life into the world. All things considered, this game is in great shape for an early access game in my opinion. It's already fun to play, and the world is interesting to explore. All it needs is a bit more polish in the areas where it's lacking, like the minion AI, and a bit more content. I have no doubt that these things will come in over time. I usually don't score early access games because they typically aren't ready to receive a score, but this game has been made by a fan of my channel and has had great necromancy planned from the start, and it also has very good necromancy implemented already. I feel like it's ready to be scored, and I hope my feedback on its minion mechanics helps the developer improve it further. I'm scoring the early access version of Gadonia an 8.4 out of 10 for its minion mechanics, which is a great score. For plentiful minions, it gets 4 points, because of the 4 permanent minions or companions you can have. The minions are brilliantly useful, only let down by their AI. They are also permanent with no timers or any nonsense like that, so full points here. Minion diversity is good, because although you only get two types of skeleton, the warrior and the mage, these can be customized and transformed extensively with the elements, which is fantastic. To achieve higher minion diversity points, I recommend the following. There are so many cool types of undead in this game. There's the abomination, which helps you during a quest. There's this basic kind of skeleton in the rags without any weapons. And there's also these advanced types of skeletons, like these skeleton knights, which look so cool. And also this big boy here. On top of that, you've also got ghosts. Ghost warriors, as well as ghost women. It would be super cool if some of these undead could be controlled by the player. I've got some ideas on how to do it. The Ray Skeleton Warrior ability has three tiers. You've got a beginner tier, a middle tier, and a final maximum tier. Throughout all of these tiers, the Skeleton Warrior remains visually the same. What if the basic beginner tier gave you these unarmed basic looking skeletons? Middle tier could give you the ones we currently have, which are armed and armoured. And the final big tier at the end could give you the fancy skeleton knights. I think this would be a really cool way to show your rising power quite nicely, and also implement these various types of skeletons into what the player can have and use. Dark Element could provide creepy looking wraiths, like the Grim Reaper. Ice Element could provide the current blue looking ones that deal cold damage. Fire could produce a flaming Grim Reaper. Lightning could produce a mini thundercloud filled with skulls. Nature could provide some kind of animal spirit, and Beast could also provide some kind of animal spirit. Holy could provide some kind of glowing yellow ghost that heals injured allies. I think if this is implemented, you'd blow the minion variety off the charts. I'd have to give Gadonia an 11 out of 10 for minion variety. That would be so super awesome. But these are all just suggestions. It's your game, and I think you're doing a great job. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this video has been informative. If you like the look of Gadonia, please buy Oleg's game and try it. If you don't like it, you can just refund it, but at least you've given it a chance. Indie developers need all the help and support we can provide them. They're artists with a vision. By the way, I made some shirts on Teespring. They're available in black and also in color. There's a standards men's t-shirt, a woman's t-shirt, a hoodie, and even a corona mask. So you can have something cooler on your face than that boring white cloth or whatever. I get a couple of bucks per piece of clothing sold, which helps support the channel. Links in the description, and I also ordered some samples and photographed these so that you can see how they look in reality. They're not ironed though, I'm sorry about that. They're fresh out of the package and I haven't washed them or anything yet. I've got more necromancy videos coming soon.